I think the globalization process has gone so far away from concern for others. And here others can be other human beings, others can be nature, others can be um, other organizations, that we are going towards a self-destruct mode. And unless more and more people not only think about or strategize, but actually put into action the values and perspective of what it means to be a human being in a phenomenal uh, organization of nature, of the globe, of space. And unless we realize that we are just tiny dots, but with the power to destroy everything, uh, things are going to just go from bad to worse. So something like the Zermatt Conference, which at least triggers thoughts into this and tries to bring together not only business leaders and government, but spiritual people and people who are thinkers and people who are revolutionary in their ideas, is an important starting point. Um, I have said several times during this uh, summit that I think that for several thousand years, we have followed the patriarchal method, the masculine method of conquering the world. And conquering has led to a zero-sum game. If I win, you lose. That is not the way of nature. Because as we have seen, the more we have abused the earth, the more the earth pays us back. If you look at the number of natural disasters that have happened in the last few years, you know that it's much more than ever before. There is another way, and that is the way of nature, that is feminine leadership. And I think feminine leadership requires people to think in terms of nurturance, in thinks, in, think in terms of everybody gaining, and that everybody includes the earth. It doesn't include only human beings. It includes biodiversity, it includes animals, it includes plants, it includes everything, because we are part of a much larger ecosystem. Feminine leadership encompasses all of that. But how many of us, men or women, have the courage to say, this is the correct leadership? Because we are used to crushing people. We are used to saying, I win and you lose. But in fact, that has taught us today, at least those of us who are willing to open our eyes, that there's no I win and you lose. If you lose, we all lose. The arts are one of the most persuasive languages that we have. If you look at traditional societies, the arts were not some cherry on the cake that, you know, if you had 20 bucks left over in a free evening on a Saturday, then you went out and watched a movie. That's not what the arts was about. The arts were the core of life. They were the way you connected with people. They were the way you connected with future generations. The, the arts, music and painting and sculpture was the way rites of passage were created. They were the way you stayed in touch with the spiritual, the practical, practical and, and found a balance. And yet we have reduced it to some ridiculous entertainment or cabaret or something that you can switch on and off. It's like the breath, you can't switch it on and off. The minute you do, you go onto a ventilator. So we need to understand that, that the arts are the common strength and the common language which can connect us all, which can break down the walls of prejudice and fear and nationalism and all of that. So unless we bring them center stage again, we are not using one of the strongest and best languages that we have.